May the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. I expect a, a raucous reply to this now. Good morning. Good morning. That was great. Welcome to our fifth Sunday in the season of Lent as we are walking through rainbows and exploring the journey together. In Lent, we have, it says uh, we're supposed to have 40 days of Lent, but Sundays don't count. So we end up with about 46 days in Lent. And so today, we will be exploring, oh goodness, okay, this is fun. <laughs> Something just happened with my technology where it doesn't want to actually do anything. Okay, that's fun. So this morning, we will be exploring the journey together as we embrace, oh, here it comes, <laughs> as we embrace God's law written on our hearts. <laughs> I almost had to go back to my study and print this out. Wow, paper and everything. Uh, <laughs> as we explore God's law written on our hearts, I usually sum up God's law in one word. Can anyone guess what that word is? Love. Say that a little louder. Love. That's right, God's law of love. And so we will be exploring that together today. And as we come together, I'd say, Ani, bienvenue, welcome to each of you. Thank you. Merci, miigwech, for joining us today in worship. As you turn to your order of service today, you will see that in the printed bulletin, the bold text, or on the screen, the white text is an invitation to unison prayer or responsive prayer. And all of our participation in worship is, of course, optional. Stand when it is appropriate as you are able. Sing as you are able. And this is church, so it's one of those places where even if you don't think you can sing, you can sing. So let it out. Trust me. I sing, and I don't think I can. So uh, do what you can as you're able. We have an activity center for those who are feeling a need to get up and do an activity. We are a space that welcomes and celebrates the presence of children. Anyone who considers yourself a child, you are welcome here, and thank you for coming. And we're glad you're here. So that activity center is for people of all ages, but we do sort of aim towards helping out with the kids having something to do if they feel that they're called, as we are aware they're called by God to be children, and that's awesome. Let us join in our acknowledgement of traditional territory. Before we gathered here for worship, the life and spirituality of the Tikmashang Anishinaabeg preceded us. We worship on their traditional territory, and for their stewardship and wisdom we are grateful. We commit to learn how we can support healing and reconciliation. As we underline that commitment that we share in love each week, we ask ourselves how we will continue to learn to support healing and reconciliation. And for me, often, the answer to that, and the short answer is God's law, which comes down to love. How do we love? By listening, by hearing, by believing the stories of others, by working for justice. Mini sermon done. As we come to the time of the life and work of the people, I invite anyone with an announcement to come and join me on the chancel. And uh, I will first start out by saying a few announcements myself. First off, happy thanks or St. Patrick's Day. It's not Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> happy St. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And I see a lot of green being worn today. I have I have some green in here, but there's also some green on there. And you've got green. And uh, we're going to celebrate that day a little bit, but uh, it is uh, also uh, where we're united, so we don't do a lot of saint stuff. But we we you know we honor the saints and we honor one another. Uh, this Thursday is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, and we are all asked as we explore our engagement with God's law how we will interact with this important part of healing and wholeness. And it's not only for St. Peter's and our ministry of healing and wholeness, but for the church and for the whole world. How do we 
look to eliminating discrimination that is based on people being racialized, where we other one another, we look at another human being and we say, well, your skin's a little different, your culture's a little different, so you're not like me. And how do we work to change that around to the diversity in humanity being a blessing for us all, helping us to underline and celebrate the uniquenesses that we each have, that the uniqueness of another actually enhances the beauty of the uniqueness of the self as well. So let us, let us ask those questions. We have a Bible study this week. It is uh, our first session where we will be engaging directly with Scripture. Last, week, last month we did a set, uh, a, an orientation and set up and decided on where we're going to be starting our reading. So today we'll be starting with the book of Genesis, and uh, we are beginning with the beginning. And uh, even if you haven't received the materials that I sent out to those who were in the last group uh, meeting, if you'd like to join up, there's no limits on that. You can all come. Everything's pretty user-friendly. You might get some surprises and learn something new. You might get some challenges and an opportunity for growth. Or you might get you know, bored and just leave. It's, it's completely up to all of you. We'll, uh, we'll find out. Although I, I, I got to say, I doubt that last one because of some very exciting stuff in the scriptures that we don't always get to talk about. So you're going you're gonna to learn something new probably today. Our uh, upcoming services, I'd like to bring your attention to that. Maundy Thursday service will be right here on Maundy Thursday, which is the Thursday of Holy Week, not this week, but the next. It will be at 7 p.m. We will have a, uh, a service of foot washing and communion, so please do come and join at 7 p.m. here in the St. Peter's Sanctuary. Our, um, actually not quite citywide, but five congregations will be getting together from around the city on Good Friday here in the St. Peter's Sanctuary as well at 10.30 a.m. on Good Friday. That's the 29th of March. And so please do come and join in that time of worship and reflection on Good Friday. And our UCW have very uh, lovingly and kindly offered to prepare hot cross buns for the fellowship time afterwards. Thank you, UCW. We really appreciate that. Our Easter Sunday services are... Uh, a plenty. We have an 8 a.m. sunrise service, which will be followed by our uh, UCW, or probably not UCW, UC guys. <laughs> the United Church guys will be hosting Easter morning breakfast at 8.30. Our 10.30 a.m. Easter Sunday morning service will occur. And at 7 p.m. will be our first French service. Oui, le 19h, uh, la célébration du dimanche de Pâques. Sur le 31 mars. And there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex for both the breakfast and for uh, anyone who is wishing to sponsor flowers in memory or honor of a loved one. So please do check that out in the, uh, in the narthex. Other announcements for the work and life of the church? Hi, I'm Julie Beer. One of my favorite movies is Jesus Christ Superstar. One of my favorite songs, which I'm sure some of you must be thinking, is called What's the Buzz? Tell Me What's Happening. I'm not going to sing it, but I could very easily. With regards to our new governance model, the table, some of you may be wondering, what is happening? What is going on? We are organizing now a meeting on uh, March the 26th, which is Tuesday, and we're inviting um, members of the table and uh, people on the ministries, people um, on ministry and personnel, the trustees, our minister, of course, our regional council reps, to come and get to know each other better and to also uh, you know, get further information in terms of uh, the work that each of these groups will be doing. So uh, this is your notice, and we will continue to provide you with information as we move forward. Thank you. Morning, everyone. I'm Mary Ann Ross, Storm Chair of the Finance Team. Guess what's been found? Five strawberry rhubarb pies. Ooh, <laughs> bottom shelf of the freezer in the UCW kitchen, and they're for sale. So um, they're still frozen, they're still delicious, and they're still only $20. So I will have them in the fellowship room after worship. 
Also, you've probably noticed my little ad in On the Rock. We are in need of a coordinator donor services. Uh, that position affects all of us. If you want a tax receipt at the end of the year, that's the person who takes care of it. It's not a demanding role in terms of uh, time, maybe a couple of hours a week. So if you find yourself or anyone else who's interested, please have them call me. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Richard Rainville Finances as well. I have two short announcements, just one in regards to the Kinsmen. Only one shift remaining uh, to complete our schedule. We need a greeter, so those are volunteers who greet guests at the Kinsmen home, hand out brochures, answer inquiries, and keep track of daily visitors. The available shift is on Friday, June 14th. We're a little ahead, but that's okay from 4.15 to 8.30. So connect with me if you might be, if you might find that of interest. As well, uh, speaking briefly about the upcoming yard sale, Marianne Roscoe and I are coordinating uh, this spring's yard sale. We have found nearly all of the lead organizers for the various sections except for the field house. So if you are hoping to try something new, now's your chance. Uh, a meeting will be held shortly with the lead organizers to discuss a few suggested changes, including uh, the yard sale extended hours, which you might have noticed on the Saturday, now being held between 8.30 and 2.30, so extending it a bit, just in hopes of uh, getting a few more sales out of that. In the meanwhile, we count on your ongoing generosity as you go through your cupboards to find various treasures you'd be happy to let go or perhaps split up a few plants that have outgrown their pots, and we hope you'll start, uh, uh, you'll help us in sharing the news. The spring yard sale is being held on Saturday, April the 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, Marianne, and Julie, and to all those who enact and support and live out the life of faith and mission of St. Peter's. So thank you all for our ongoing life together. Let us join in our spiritual focus for our worship this morning. New life arises. That which rises must first fall and die. Single grains merely remain as they are unless they are released into the ground. The grains of the earth that fall will multiply and Come, die to the self and live a life of service to the living God. And God will raise us up anew. Amen. Each week, we light a candle as a symbol of our faith found in Christ. This week, we light it up as a reminder of that law that is written on our hearts and shines out through our lives. And that law is love. <coughs> Embodied in flame, lived out in the world through us. As we embody the light of life and the love of God, we acknowledge that this is a community that strives to love and serve others, to care and to include all. A ministry of healing and wholeness of togetherness and love. We proclaim that all are welcome here. You are welcome here. Let us share in our Walking Through Rainbows liturgy. Walking through rainbows accompanied by doves, we receive God's voice offering guidance, wisdom, and promise. Entering sacred time, a journey of peace, surrounded by beauty, we feel our connection with creation. We are seekers of holiness, inquiring minds, searching for meaning to fill our days with joy. Today we lay this cloth representing the color of the rainbow blue, color of deep skies and deep seas. 
light presence scattered all over the world. The color of the living waters, Christ's message of radical welcome. As we lift up God's law and God's dream for this world today, let us join in singing from more voices, number 106, our hymn, I Am the Dream. Let us sing. to lead us in our prayer of the day. Please join in unison with our prayer of the day. God of grains and grace, we gather today seeking to follow in the way of Jesus. The path he chose for his disciples was one of service, and it requires of us that we lay down our desires our ambitions, and serve you with our whole heart. May our worship this day inspire our dying and rising with you as we seek to love and serve others like Jesus. May it be so. Amen. So I have uh, an invitation to make for the young at, uh, those who are young at heart. And uh, Susan, did you bring it today? Cool. It's, where is it? Oh, there it is. Hell yeah, Abram. Abram Scott. This, this is great. Thank you. This is wonderful. I don't know if you want me to use this myself, Susan, with my ears, but it would be gross. No, don't do that. Can I put it like this? Okay. We won't put it in our ears because it's actually Susan's stethoscope from, from being a doctor. Thank you, Susan, for bringing this. So one of our members is Susan. She's at the back. Hey, Susan, wave for the kids. Hey, kids, there's Susan. All right, I'm going to sit down here, and we'll talk. How are you today? Good, yeah? Having a good week? Cool. It's very sunny, eh? Nice and bright today. We love it. So I mentioned it just now. Let's see who was paying attention. Do you remember what this is called? It is a stethoscope. That is correct. Do you know what it is for? Abram? For listening to people's hearts. That's right. And, and sometimes, I believe, and Susan, you can correct me, I think doctors also sometimes listen to other things inside with them, too, inside of the body, like how we breathe sometimes. You know, if you get a 
Do you have a cold and your lungs will rattle sometimes when you breathe too? So they listen for that a bit too and other things. So it's, uh, it's something that helps doctors to know if everything's going okay inside of us, right? Very much we listen to the heart and the heart really does make quite a sign. If you can tell, I, I believe that if your heart, if you have an infection, sometimes your heart will be racing because your body's working really hard to get, to get better. Have you ever had a cold or, or a, a flu or been sick for, for a bit? Yeah? Did you feel your heart sometimes racing when you were feeling sick? Yeah. That happens to me too when I'm not feeling great. So my heart will be pumping because your body's like, I want to heal. So it's getting all the healing goodness moved around in your body because a lot of that's in in your blood. A lot of the nu nourishment and nutrients is in the blood, and the heart pumps the blood. And so that's a sign of a healthy body is a steady, strong heartbeat that's not too fast, not too slow, not too strong, and not too weak. Because if we're pumping our blood too hard, it's hard on the rest of the body. If we're pumping the blood too slowly, well, my grandfather used to faint a lot because he had really what they call low blood pressure. So his, his, he would get to the point where he'd stand up and his blood, couldn't, his blood pressure wasn't keeping up, so he'd faint and just fall right over, which was sad for him because he'd hit his head a lot. Yeah. And I hit my head a lot still, but it's because I'm too tall and I got to pay better attention. <laughs> Do you know what else happens with the heart? What do we use our hearts for other than pumping blood? And we can be metaphorical about this. Love. Thank you, Robert. And so today we're going to talk about, we're talking about God's law, which is? Love. That's right, which is love. And when we talk about loving, we often talk about our hearts. And that's been going on for a long time. The heart has been seen as a symbol of our feelings and our love. And so when do we, when do we see hearts a lot? Valentine's. Valentine's Day, which happened just about a month ago, right? Yeah. Well, today we're going to hear about uh, a couple of stories from the Bible about Jeremiah, who was a prophet in ancient Israel, and he talked about God's love and God's law needing to be embraced a lot in order for the people to get through a really hard time. And that really helped them a lot. They kept God's love in their hearts, even when they were having a hard time. And that helped them to maintain their community and maintain their beliefs and, and be loving to each other in, uh, in, hard, in their hard times. Do you, have you been through times where you found that love would be very helpful for you? Not yet? Give it, give it time. <laughs> well, I'll give you an example of something that the kids here at St. Peter's did, actually, a month ago. That is about hearts and about love. You all wrote letters to the Prime Minister about, uh, for have a, it's called Have a Heart Day, which is about calling for equality and justice for indigenous kids in Canada who don't get the same amount of resources given to their education and health care and family care as kids who aren't indigenous and are, aren't living on reserves in Canada. And do you know what happened in response to the letters that you all wrote? We got a letter back from the Prime Minister of Canada. And that Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, that his, his letter thanked the kids here at St. Peter's for sharing your concern and said that, they, that the government is acting to do what it can to help improve things. Now, it's probably slower than we hope it would be, but it is something that's working. And you kids here, here at St. Peter's, we made a difference in the lives of others. And you shared love and lived out God's law. Isn't that beautiful that, that the kids here at St. Peter's could write some letters and make a difference because we share love? Isn't that beautiful? That's great. Thank you all for that. And so today, I'm going to encourage you each to find love no matter what you do. Even if you're um, having an argument with your brother. Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or if you don't want to go to bed and your parents are saying it's bedtime. Or if your friends are keep picking on somebody at school. Try to find love in your heart and respond with love and help each other to be loving. So how, how, do, how do we act when we're loving each other, when we're being loving? How do we act? Are we, do we hold a grudge or do we forgive? We forgive. Good answer. Do we uh, try to be optimistic or do we stay, like we always say, everything's negative all the time? 
<laughs> now, we don't have to be toxically op optimistic where we tell people who are having horrible things happen in their lives that they should be happy, but, but we could, we could try, to, try to find joy in life, right? Okay, and when there's, when there's, when there's war or conflict, what would be a loving way to respond? Forgiveness, and I think I heard working for peace. Did, yeah, so working for peace and forgiveness is a wonderful way to respond because that's how we find our togetherness. And so look to see that love in yourself, but also look to see it in others, and that'll, that'll really help because it's easier to find peace when you recognize the humanity of another. Is it okay if we pray together? Okay, let's pray. God of the heartbeat, God of the love beat, we thank you for the opportunity to remember that your law of love is written on our hearts. Help us to share that love, even when it's hard, and help us to share that love for ourselves and for everyone around us. Help us to care for creation by loving this planet and care for one another by loving each human as our sibling in your global family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Meredith is going to help you all out with uh, some leadership for Spirit Quest this morning. Thanks so much, Meredith, for helping out. Abram, would you mind taking this back to Susan? Is that okay? You can handle it gently. There we go. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have lots of fun, and congratulations again on the great work. We did great stuff. As the children and youth go to their programs, and of course anyone who wants to stay in, that's okay too, but it's going to be lots of fun learning and exploring faith for the children. Thank you again, Susan, for the awesome uh, stethoscope. Let us pray. God of love, our ego can all too often get in the way of our ability to serve you and others with our lives. Our false self is driven by our lack of trust in you to provide for our need. So often we rely on our own strength, unable to see the blessings offered by others through you. Yet we know that our true self can let go and be formed anew by your love. You offer us understanding and healing from our false ways. You transform us and raise us to new life. Amen. Friends, I offer you these words of grace. Jesus reminds us that those who serve him will have the assurance of his presence with him. Trust that you are loved. You are forgiven. That new life rises and that Jesus abides with you. In the name of Christ, amen. Our hymn comes from Voices United, number 220, 282, Long Before the Night. Let us sing.
be seated. I invite Kathy to lead us in our readings this morning. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The first reading is from the Hebrew Scriptures, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, a new covenant. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The second reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks wish to see Jesus. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Jesus speaks about his death. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was the thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Herein lies the word of the Lord.
the prayer of St. Patrick, I invite you to join me in prayer before our application. Let us pray. God of love and community, of care and creation, may the words we hear today and the meditations of all our hearts lead to actions that awaken your dream for this world. Loving God, our rock, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. I will put my law within you and write it on your hearts. God, whose nature is that of love, who loved the world into being and loves us so much as to be with us incarnate in Christ, whose steadfast loving kindness has been proclaimed by scriptures and prophets and Christ, God's law is to love. Living in Sudbury, we are no strangers to the blessings found in the seasons. Spring begins this week. This time, as the vernal equinox, the first official day of spring, begins this Tuesday, the 19th of March at 11.50 p.m. We are reminded of the complexity and beauty and wonder of the seasons of nature. Last spring, around this same time, we began our book study of the circle of life, the heart's journey through the seasons, a book that shared reflections, discussion, poetry, and prayer, dedicated to exploring how our inner journey is reflected in the outer journey of nature, our inner seasons, analogous to the outer seasons. Summer, a time of lively activity. Fall, a time of harvest and of letting go. Winter, a time of stillness and reflection. Spring, a time of renewal, a bursting forth of life. This past winter has given many of us reason, if not time, to reflect on our lives and the lives of others. Seasons turn. The earth was formed from the swirling, nebulous state of creation since the light of the sun ignited. The seasons have changed and changed once more in a dance of life in symbiotic relationship. Rest, renewal, reflection. Rest, renewal, reflection. Each season needs the others in relationship. Those who are familiar with a recent television series, Game of Thrones, may know that in a, a world very different from ours, and yet not too different, unfortunately, there is a season of winter that comes they know not when and lasts they know not how long, sometimes decades. Imagine this world if winter came and lasted for a decade. How would we live? Nature thrown off its balance. Seasons interrupted. Only this season of rest and reflection, with no growth, no renewal, no harvest, no letting go, no new life. But here on this earth, in this world, we have still, for now, our seasons, our cycles. God's law of love alive in the cycle of life, death, and renewal, and life again that sustains this world. In today's readings, we are reminded of this dance in Jeremiah and Jesus, who teach us that God's constant life-giving love that is the source, that is the center of God's law. Jeremiah preached his word at a time when the southern kingdom was under siege. Israel had fallen, the northern kingdom, to the Assyrians about 150 years previous. And now, in the 6th century before the Common Era, the Babylonians were at the city gates, planning to deport some, the ruling classes, the skilled classes, 
to the Babylonian Empire, and the rest were to be enslaved or killed. Those taken away into exile were to be in service to the powers of this foreign nation, this nation looking for power and wealth and resources set upon destroying anyone in their way. And yet, while the Israelites were in exile, kept away from temple and home, from community and from family, they discovered ways that their faith could be nurtured and grown, even though they were far away, even through and after a time of separation. Hearing from their God that while things don't always work out the way we expect or the way that we desire, that the divine is ever ready to co-create, to recreate with us relationship, never giving up on us. God comes back time and again, like season after season. For John, the totality of Jesus entering into his glory is centered on the renewal of the loving relationship with our creator. The gospel, according to John, says that Jesus' mission is fulfilled when he, as bridger of humanity and diversity, and divinity, uh, humanity and divinity, pardon me, when he lives and dies, is resurrected and ascends to sit at God's right hand, that the relationship is renewed through Jesus, who is one with the creator in the fulfillment of his ministry. Humanity and divinity unified. The Spirit remains with us alive in the world as the divine presence within humanity. Once again, divinity and humanity united. Not in one way, not in two ways, and likely not only in the three ways that our Trinitarian ideas suggest. New life through renewed relationship, a relationship in which human participation is optional. We can choose to turn from God, and we certainly have, and we certainly do. By turning away from the ways of love, time and again. By turning away from one another, from ourselves, from our planet, time and again. And through our scriptures, through our teachings, through our faith traditions, through our spirituality, through our lives lived together, we see that time and again, God returns to us like the spring after a winter, like a shaft of sunlight breaking through after a thunderstorm to shine a rainbow of peace and love. And yet when we are in the winter of our souls, when we are under siege by the forces of hate and division in the world, how do we hold on to God's law of love? By obeying it. Turn towards another and you will find a relationship renewed. It always strikes me that when I'm feeling down, when I'm at my lowest, when I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world, that for some reason, and this might not work for everybody else, but when I help someone who is in need, for example, when we go as a group from St. Peter's to help out at the Elgin Street Mission, and we see those who perhaps have different struggles than we have, but we recognize their humanity. We recognize the universality of our common lives. We live in the same places. We breathe the same air. We eat the same food. We suffer the same fate under climate change, under war, under famine. We each sweat under the same hot sun when summer ravages us with a heat wave. We all feel the bitterness 
of the winter's cold as it blows through the, through the trees. We all stop from time to time and relish a warm spring moment. When we remember God's love found throughout creation, when we remember God's love written on our hearts and on the hearts of others, when we remember that it is written on our own hearts, when we see nations warring, invading, oppressing one another, and we fear for the destruction of lives and creation, we can find hope in love. It is written on our hearts, our hearts that are made for loving. And when we see hate and fear breaking relationships through ignorance and self-interest, not only around the world, but here in Sudbury, how do we keep faithful to one another in turning to the hearts of others, in turning to the love in those hearts and the love in our own hearts, God's law to love and responding with love? When we see others oppressed and alienated, disadvantaged within our society while others are so very privileged, how do we answer? When we see our siblings in humanity denied opportunity because of co the color of their skin or the difference in their cultural heritage or the diversity of their beliefs, how do we respond? If the prophets called us back into right relationship with God and one another, and Jesus called and calls us back into right relationship with God and one another, time and again, a relationship based in love. Do we not have a blueprint for finding peace and harmony within ourselves as well as humanity? And how wonderfully, beautifully, frustratingly amazing is it that it is to simply love. God has come to us to teach us that time and again, calling to us through the spirit of love in the world. Perhaps God's law of love written on our hearts can help us to answer these many concerns, calling for renewal and reconnection in loving relationship. And this week, wherein we lift up the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, perhaps when we see others seeking freedom from relationship, looking to exclude some rather than to include all, perhaps we can find within God's law the appropriate response. To love. Love those who are ignorant enough to teach them. Love those who seek to divide enough by calling rather for unity that celebrates diversity. And love those who are hurt through the healing of relationships for all. God, as our constant companion, has written love on our hearts. Let's continue to participate in the divine relationship by continuing to form loving relationships with all of God's children all of creation. Connect with community and with individuals from diverse identities. Learn to listen to the stories of life and faith shared by others, even those who are perceived as specifically and particularly different. Lift up the beauty of all life found in humanity and the world as sacred. I will put my law within you and write it on your hearts. Let's go forth to learn, live, and grow together with one another and with God in love. Thanks be to God. Amen. As yeast rises to create bread, so do the rising of our gifts multiply the love of God in the life of the world. Give of your treasures, whatever it may be, however large or small, and trust that God will use it for the building of the kingdom of God as it emerges among us. Our offering.
offering for the life and work of this church in this community and in God's world will now be received. Let us join in our prayer of dedication. O God, who causes our lives to rise, we lay down to you the abundance you have given us and allow it to fall so that you may multiply it to give life to your world. May it be so. Amen. We continue to pray, lifting up our prayers of joy and concern with the understanding that when joys are shared, they are brightened, and when burdens are carried together, they are lightened, shared in community with divinity. Steadfast God, amid many changes and challenges around us, we are grateful that you are with us. You understand our fears, you support and guide us, and you give us courage to face whatever lies ahead. Thank you for the gift of faith, a solid rock to support us. And so we trust that you keep working in ways seen and unseen through us for goodness to prevail. Loving God, in this time when there is much to be anxious about, we pray for the world you love. Send your healing spirit to bring peace with justice to the troubled places of the world. We lift up in particular places such as Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine, Yemen, Ethiopia, Brazil, and here at home in Canada. We seek your presence to remind our love, loving ways to enact justice and equity for all people as we seek to fight racial discrimination in our hearts and in our society. We pray that there be enough for all around the world and that peace will prevail on earth as well as in our hearts. Bring care and comfort to those who have been hurt in conflict. Wisdom to those who seek to end hostilities. Encourage to those who advocate for the most vulnerable. Send your healing spirit to mend relationships between religious groups and cultural groups who find themselves in tension or turmoil. We pray for mutual respect to grow between people who look at each other with suspicion and among people who have painful histories with each other. 
open our hearts and minds to those whose situations and concerns we don't understand and bring your gift of reconciliation to us all. Send your healing spirit to people we know and to the earth you love. We remember before you friends in grief, those suffering illness and all waiting for treatment, those facing difficulty at work or finding work, disagreements in our church or community, concerns about the environment we depend on and love. God of love, we lift up our care and concern for your people here in the community of St. Peter's. We lift up our love and hope for Bradley and Brennan, for Elaine and John, Connie, Daphne, Teddy, Dustin, for Katie, for Ed, Bruce, for the Sperry family, for Alan and Jan. We lift our care and our love for Tim, for Elio, for Katie. We hold in our prayers Lee's John, Bill, Mike, Juan, Jessica, Jed. We lift our prayers for Ava, for Dan and Susie, for Louise, for Murray and Peggy, for Bob, for Rada, for Noreen, for Pat and family, and for Chorus's continued recovery. We lift our prayers and our support for Alan and Joan, for Miranda and Jean, for Garrett, for Sean. for Nicholas, for Pam and Dennis, for Sean, for Judith, for Mike, Nevea, for Jason, Dan, for Blaze and Lauren, for Sue and family, for Melissa and family, for Holly and family, and for Tia and John. as we continue to hold those in our community who are in times of difficulty in our hearts and in our love, we pray for the continuing ministry of the church in our neighborhoods and around the world. And as we move towards our celebration of Christ's resurrection, loving God, send your healing spirit to raise our hearts and our hopes with the promise of new life found in Christ. Restore us to joy in your salvation and sustain in us all a willing spirit as we live out your law that is love. And as we continue to lift up these prayers spoken aloud or spoken in the depths of our hearts, we continue praying, saying together an interpretation of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our parent who is among us, blessed be your creation. May your reign be a reality here on earth. May we become more interested in building your kingdom here and now than in waiting for it to come down from above. Let us share our bread with those who hunger. Let us learn to forgive as well as to receive forgiveness. Help us through the time of temptation, delivering us from all evil. For ours are the eternal blessings that you pour upon the earth. Amen. Our commissioning hymn comes from More Voices number 176. 
Three things I promise. Let us rise as we are able and raise our voices as we are able. Let us sing. blessing. As we go from this place, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Go now in peace. Elena le Père Seigneur, vaya con Dios, skeringoa. Peg palayan kayo neng dios. Amen. Amen.